You're still watching Ways. Now, Self-Injury Awareness Day is a global event held annually on March 1st. Its purpose is to remove the stigma attached to self-injury and to encourage parents, family members, educators, and healthcare professionals to recognize the, um, the signs of self-harm. Medically, self-injury is defined as intentionally inflicting damage on one's body tissue in ways that are non-suicidal um, and are not sanctioned by the culture of society. Such acts can include cutting with sharp instruments, burning one's skin, banging limb, uh, limbs on hard surfaces, and scratching one's skin and breaking one's bone. Now, self-injury can occur on any part of a body, though um, the arm, the wrist, wrist rather the thighs and the stomach are the most common areas where people inflict self-harm all right so this is a, an interesting one because you know when i was reading this i realized that i did self-harm as a child you know how you take um the match um stick yeah and you now put it i still have some of the spots here you now put it on your back of your skin I and you light it so that. it's like to to check your tr um, threshold for pain you yeah. know we did that a lot. So if you see my 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 arm, you see the the points there. We did that. I never. So I love myself too much. I would never try that. <laughs> like, Maury, I've always loved myself. I think the only thing I did was, you know, when you bite your fingers, you know that tiny tip at the edge. You bite it up forcefully, uh, yeah. and then you get whitlow. Yeah. So that's what I. So I would pinch the whitlow, so it hurts me, and then there's like bitter sweet feeling to uh, it. So Maury, did. did you ever self harm? <laughs> That's so why I'm asking people that was there any particular thing people were going through during that point in time because I can't relate to all these things. Me, me, no. and Pim, we don't go Interestingly, I think it was your for us, and we did all my siblings and I. We used to do that because we used to think that like, I want to see how how long you can withhold the pain. Really? Or we were, take... were, you, were you going through anything at that no, point? No, it was just for the like we were just for wanted fun. to test how how much you can handle pain. Or we take candle, wow. candle wax, and we put it at the back of so okay, you I did that. So that's what I'm saying. Those candle, are, yes, yeah, I, so, I totally okay, did that. I did that. Works. I did candle works too. <laughs> so I now you can relate. Works. So you now you can relate. So we, we did all of those things. But you know, it's just now they just give Oimbo gives it, you know, Oimbo name and it's now sweet. <laughs> but I just <laughs> thought that it was an interesting holiday to mention. All right, so um let me start with Sansi because you have an interesting uh, conversation for us. Yeah, so <laughs> today I went on to Twitter. Uh, what's trending in Twitter? A couple of things are trending um, in Nigeria, particularly. I think uh, Lagos too. I checked Lagos uh, with with 400k is trending. <laughs> people were. It is just hilarious on Twitter today, you guys. People were talking about what they would do with 400k with all sorts of funny comments. Someone said, "With 400k, my village people will worship me." I'm like, "Where is your village again?" <laughs> but anyway, my focus is Tope. So Tokwe is trending because um, someone uh, tweeted a new int. This is a tweet. A new intern was asked to um, was asked to contact me via chat. She referred to me and my boss by name. It shocked me. So the intern texted, "Hi Tokwe, XXX asked me to contact you." So now the thing is, why Tokwe is trending is why would you refer to your superior or I mean you're seeking employment from these people? Why would you refer them by their name? Mm. So Nigerians obviously got talking. So a lot of people are like, "Like what century are you from?" It's, these days people refer to themselves as uh, Obi, Ada, Tunde, Femi. You know it. It's, it's like the more informal you make the work environment, create the boundaries, but you know, leave it informal so people feel like family. You know, and others are like, no, you say Mr. A, Mrs. B, Sa, Ma, Auntie, and like it's a, it's a it's a huge argument going. And I mean, those are if you can see the comments on the t on on the screen, those are like some of the things Nigerians are saying. There's like a lot of back and forth, and this has over thirty thousand tweets. I'm telling you, it wow. is crazy on Twitter wow. right now. Wow. But 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 Tanzi and Mori. What do you think? I mean, should mm. we, this culture of being, do I call it subservience culture? Mm. Should we bring it to the workplace in the first place? Because I've seen a lot of people lose their jobs just because maybe they're superior, they did not refer to their superior as auntie or uncle, in a work environment. Like, where do we draw the line? I think that's petty. Like, really? I mean, well, different, okay, here, here is the thing. Find out what works for each work environment. Mm. But in this lady's case, you don't really know what works for them. So Nigeria is a society that we adore respect. Like, call me ma, call me sa, no, but I auntie, think, uncle. I think for her, we though, love it. Because it's the first time encounter. I try to do that. When I try to meet people, mm. at first, I don't just call you by your first name. I'll call you, um, hi, Mr. or Mrs. Yeah. or MS. You know, mm. I'll just put it, you know, just to regard the person that oh i respect you good morning sir yeah. you know if you don't call the person so it's just i think for me just 
I, I'm trying to balance where we draw the line between um, what's it called disrespect mm. and you know um, trying to be maybe like all these. Um, yeah, I think I think, I think when you're nature. in when um uh when when you're not in the organization, find out what works for them. Yeah. Like personally, I like to address people on how, first name basis. No, it's not. Even, how do you like me to address you? Yes. Like. Typically, because I understand my society, I go with Sa, Ma. You will now be the person to tell me, ah, stop Please calling call me, me my Sa. Name, yeah. Then I'll address you by your name. Yeah. Then in a situation where you're not comfortable and you're not saying anything, I'm like, okay, you don't want me to address you as Sa. Yeah. What would you prefer? Yeah, you absolutely. Yeah. Maury, do you want to add something to, uh, to that or you just want to take your story? Well, I kind of like agree with um, Sanzi because you just look at the situation of, uh, on the ground before you know what, um, what title to use to address somebody. If I was, you know, the person reaching out for the first time, I most likely would have added sir or you yeah. know, Mr. or Mrs. to it. Because, you know, where I'm from, for instance, if somebody is six months older than you, like in my household, you have to add auntie to it. So it's kind of like something that I can, even if it's two days, you have to add auntie. It is sickening sometimes, but, you know, it's already like a part and parcel of me. So I think you just look at, and there's some establishment that people be like, oh, no, just call me by my name. Or you look at, even if I still call you by your name, there are still some instances where I will say mama or big sis or big bro. I will sure put that. Mama, I will let you know that I respect you, mm. you know, yeah. even though I'm calling well, you. Well, makes sense, name. makes sense. So I don't, I don't, I don't really <laughs> think that I would have said hi, Tope. I most yeah, I would have been, I would have been a, a bit more, a like, bit more diplomatic, yeah. yeah. All right, Maury, let's take your story quickly. <laughs> okay, so my story is um, a rather sad one. I fought everything within, within my power to um, not take this story, but... It is what it is. Um, so terrorists kill seven in fresh Kaduna attack. Mm. Terrorists have attacked Kajuru and Igabi councils of Kaduna state and killed seven persons. The Commissioner of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruan, has said um, yesterday that bandits attacked Kanjiri village in Igabi and killed two residents identified as Ibrahim Rabius and Abdul Rahman Mohammed, while one person sustained a gunshot injury. He also said that two locals identified as Alad Ibrahim, Iru, and Mohammed Rabi were killed in Igabi. Um, in a separate incident, the commissioner added that gunmen invaded Kutura Station in Kajura and killed three residents, identified as Michael Shadri, Clement Bibi, and Dangama Shaman. <laughs> like, I like to be a carrier of good news everywhere I go, whether it's saying that we found new COVID, new um, COVID vaccines, or, you know, found a cure to COVID, or COVID mm -hmm. vaccines are coming to Nigeria. So this one is sort of, you know, different from what I like to do. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. And it just keeps making me, it, it makes me wonder if we're ever going to come to, if all these things so ever going to come to an end. That's why we keep know, on, that's direction. why we need to keep on talking about 2023. The bandit tree yeah. and all that. We need to keep on talking about what our fate will be, mm. you know, going forward and how, what, what, what kind of leaders that we're looking forward to having because this is a clear case of failed leadership. I mean, it's failure in leadership. There's nothing... There's no how you want to sugarcoat it. Just pure failure. All right, so my story is actually quite interesting. And because it's tied to a bit of what we were talking about today, right. I thought to, to mention it. So um, also, um, Yahaya Bello was trending on Twitter as well. Mm -hmm. So oh, yeah. <laughs> when I checked why he was trending, apparently he had an uh, what's it called? He had a closed-door meeting, in their words, with um, former president, um, what's it called? Um, Obasanjo at Transcop Hilton and you know his posters are all over um, I think they said in Port Harcourt he has his posters in Agua Wari his posters of 2023 you know posting so if you go on social media everybody says over my dead body someone even said I would rather vote uh, was he called Tinubu 100 times to vote mm -hmm. in this guy and there's a video of him you know being co being called referred to as a youth you know, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, by a senator, I think a, a, a Barry Bay or something, being referred to as a youth and saying that, you know, yes, he's a youth, what has he done? You know, he's, he's, he's made a mess and all of that. While another video commending his, his uh, effort on security in his state. Mm. So for me, I just think this is actually very interesting because, I mean, this is the first, maybe, um, first sense of what 2023 
would look like in terms of the kinds of candidates that will be coming out for leadership uh, positions, especially presidency and all of that. You so know, here is I thought to view, mention this, yeah. Right. Can we get to a place where we can rub off this closed door meeting? So it's not like once you go into a closed door meeting with Obasanjo, that means you're like... <laughs> you have been endorsed. Prospect. Like, <laughs> stop with the endorsement, man. No, see, they, they are past. They are gone. The people that need to endorse you is us. Come and convince us that you're worthy to hmm, sit in that seat. I like yeah. that. I like that. You know, so we are tired of the closed door meeting. Meeting. Ain't nobody got time for that. Okay. No? All righty. So we're going to take a very <laughs> short break. When we return, we'll be delving into our conversation on 2023, our voice and our votes with our guest, Tedu Babyface. Stay with us. We'll be right back.